Hi, I'm Stephen Tamamy. For Piano Day 2021, Christian Henson and myself teamed up to put together the claustrophobic piano. In this video, I wanted to cover how I've been putting together the automation that allows you to turn the raw monolith wave files into a full contact and decent sampler instrument. So let's start just with a demonstration of the automation and then I'll go into a bit more detail of what's going on under the hood. So what we've got up and running here, we've got uh, contact, Decent Sampler, Swartzando, um, I've also got Creator Tools up and running um, and a few scripts. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to quickly load up this NKI file. It's just a template file for a few things we can't automate. And let's see, let's time this and see how quickly we can create all of these different formats. So let's go. Push in that contact. Let's run the DS and also the Swartzando. Let's load up the DS preset and also let's load up the Sportsendo and we are done. We actually have all those instruments. So let's give the contact one a little play. We've got all the notes working. We've got the pedal noises. And if I crank the notes down, leave the release triggers up. We've got all the release triggers. We've got multiple mics here up and running, which is really great. So what is going on here and how do we get here? Well, let's start off actually some way back at the beginning of Piano Book. And that's where uh, Christian came up with this idea of an MVP template that allowed you to record a piano in a cycle of fifths. So I've got the original template here. Uh, for those who may have played with it, this might seem a bit familiar. C0. And? And so the idea of this template really was to make it easy for you to record a piano, uh, just a simple uh, two layers, a quieter layer and a louder layer, no pedal noises, no round robins, um, and using a cycle of fifth. But it was a way to create a very easy sampling of a piano. Now, this technique had a couple of issues, um, and this is where Christian came up with the idea of a heat map, where the heat map would allow you to prioritize your samples in the areas that meant the most. So that got us to the point of having a new form of template that allowed us to record the samples. Now, the second part of this is really about having a monolith system. The monolith system is all about creating a single large file and loading that one large file into the sampler. This saves a lot of effort. It means that when it comes to chopping up your samples, you don't need to be doing all of the titling, making sure everything's accurate uh, in the file names. Um, and you also can do most of your work inside the DAW. So on the Piano Book website, there is a section here under contribute for the monolith sampling system. And you can see there's a bunch of information about what we're doing here, how we're creating the samples and so on. So lots of information here if you'd like to read it. Certainly this visual representation is a really nice way of seeing what that heat map looks like. Um, but we've also got a template to get going. Now I've been enhancing this template recently so this page is not completely up to date but you can get the latest template from my GitHub repo um, and I'll put a link to that in the description. All you need to do here, uh, you can read through the information here, really what you want to do is grab the latest release and save that. So I'm just going to save that to my desktop and then you can unpack that zip file and it's going to have everything that you need inside of it. So the recording templates are here in this recording directory. At the moment, we only have a logic template. We'd love to have other templates. Um, so if anyone wants to help contribute those, that would be most welcome. So this is the full template and you can see it's got multiple layers and you can see that sort of heat map uh, representation. So we've got the hard layer, medium layer, soft layer. This is with the pedal down and then we repeat again with a pedal up. So we can actually see that with some of the monoliths that Christian has created. So let's go and find one of those now. So this is the Autumn Piano. If we just dump this into a new track and you'll see that everything is lining up here. So this is the whole of the monolith recording and this is what's actually used in the sample instrument as well. But you can see if we zoom in a little bit here, you can see where everything is lining up. So you can see here we've got the starts of each of the notes on certain bars. So this whole system allows you to really create effectively a protocol that allows you to then do all of the automation inside of the sampler. And this is a very detailed recording of the piano with both the pedal down and the pedal up. And you can get a lot 
lot of the good results just from having the pedal down samples and repeating those for when the pedal is up. There's obviously a difference in the sound when the pedal is down to when it's up, but often this is good enough, and that's what we did with the claustrophobic piano. So within this template here that we downloaded, there are a number of alternatives, and this same pedals one actually only has the pedal down recordings. So that's what we did with the claustrophobic. So let's take one of the claustrophobic samples, drop that monolith in, and once again, you'll see that everything is lining up really nicely across the template. As I mentioned earlier, there is also was an MVP style of recording, which was just a simple cycle of fifths. What I've done is I've created another project alternative that allows us to do that type of sampling as well. So if you don't want to have all those round robins and the pedal noises, this is exactly the same style of recording with the cycle of fifths as we did with the original MVP. So you can actually take an original MVP recording and lay it out into a monolith according to this version. And I actually did my family piano piano recording using the original MVP and you can see here I've actually lined that up into this technique here so using this new template I was able to line all my samples up into this and then I could just bounce this one track down and have it as a monolith so actually the original MVPs can be created into a monolith system. So let's go back to the automation and see how that works out. Inside of this package, when you download it, there is this config file, and this is what drives all of the automation for your instrument. So I'm going to open this up. You can use any tool that you like. I quite like Visual Studio Code for this. So what you can see here, we've got a configuration file that's determining how my instrument is going to get set up, what its name is going to be. There's some prefixes which get used for some of the groups inside of contact um, and a file path. You can also choose a few other variables here, depending on what you're going to do. So let's set this up for the family piano MVP style. So my family piano monolith is called familypiano.wave. I'm going to also call it family piano. My prefix is fine. Now, the flavor is one of those templates that we saw inside of the recording. So I didn't do this with the default. I've done it with the MVP. Um, and I'll explain these other variables in a moment. Let's go back to the automation. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to load up this monolith uh, file here. So if we go to Creator Tools and we're going to do Open Project, and then we're going to find the download here and load up this project file. And inside it, it's got the one Lua script, the contact Lua script um, that will get us going. This is all we need to do. Now, inside of contact, we do need to have an instrument loaded. Now, you can actually start with a blank file completely, and most of the automation will do what you need it to do. However, I've created this template NKI to get us going. So let's load that up. So you'll see inside of this template, there's very little to set up. There is one group, and there are no uh, scripts. Nothing is really wired up. The only thing that's in this is there are a couple of things I can't automate at this point. There is a velocity curve that allows you to manipulate how the piano plays. And also there's some effects and also an ADSR. So those are pre-configured. And what's going to happen is that this group one is going to be used as a template for a number of the other groups. So the other thing I need to do is put my samples here in the samples directory. So I've got family piano here. And now I should be able to run the script. So if I hit play and then I push it to contact and you'll see that it sprung up with the piano book template. And if we hit edit again, you'll see it's created multiple different groups um, with everything set up. So this actually should play out of the box. which is pretty impressive on its own. Now, what it has done is it's created these different groups here. And with the MVP, it's quite easy to see what is going on here. We've got basically one round robin for the notes with pedals and without pedals. Those are actually just duplicates of each other. The release triggers, pedal up and pedal down. Actually, there are no samples inside of those, completely blank. What you can see is as we select each of these regions here, you can see that down here in the sample, you can see that it's just picking out the right section of the overall monolith to use for these playbacks. There's also wired up a number of other things here. We've got the buses set up and various other things that are going to allow us to do more advanced use cases like the multi-mic that I showed at the very beginning. 
So let's see what that looks like if I set up the claustrophobic piano once again. So let's go over here into the samples. Let's copy in claustrophobic piano samples. And now let's just go back to our configuration file. Now actually there are a whole bunch of examples here that I've put together to help you uh, get going. So this one is actually the configuration that we use for the claustrophobic piano. If I copy that, I can actually put that in here as the config because um, this is script is actually including those examples. So this gives me that configuration straight out the gate. Now what's going on in this is we've got uh, multiple prefixes this time. We'll see those in the names of the groups. We've also got multiple files here. I've also got the same pedals flavor and I'm going to configure up some different contact skins and decent sampler skins than the ones that are built into the template. So let's get those files as well. So we're going to put those in the resources pictures folder and what I need here is both the graphic and one of these text files that tells uh, contact how to read it. So we just copy those into there. So now we can go back and run the automation again, hit play, push again to contact. And you can see that it's loading up all of those samples now. Obviously a lot more groups in this one because we've got multiple mic positions. And when we open that up, you can see again, now we've got multiple different mics here with those nice prefixes. So you can see these are all the groups with the round robins, uh, the pedal up, pedal down samples and so on for the different mic positions. And as I mentioned before, all of the busing uh, is working here as well. So you can see here, this is going to bus two, this one's going to bus one, and that's how all of these uh, mic sliders work here that are on the front panel, those are adjusting those buses. In addition, uh, you'll see that uh, each of these groups are a little bit more sophisticated now here. So you can see we've got multiple layers here set up, uh, but the same principle is still true. So that's the, the contact part. Uh, Decent Sampler is actually slightly easier because everything can be run from Lua. So Lua is a programming language that Creator Tools uses. So, so that I could have the same code, I've kept everything using Lua. You can download it very easily. Uh, in fact, on most Macs, it's already there and installed. So I'm just going to open up a terminal from this directory and all I need to do to run the DS is Lua and then DS.Lua and that will create inside the instruments directory it will create the DS preset file here and the same is true for Sforzando it will create those. Now, there's one small problem at the moment. We haven't set things up so that you can have multi mics. So whilst this actually will load, uh, it has multiple mic positions and we don't have the mic controls here on this decent sampler yet. That is something that I know Dave is working on. So we will get there eventually. So what we can do though, is we can create different DS presets for the different mic positions. Um, and that's again, just a simple matter of choosing a slightly different configuration file. So here you can see here, I've got an example here of the M149 signal here. Um, so I can actually use this one and this time, instead of having all of the different file paths, I'm just gonna have the one. So if I use this configuration and run the DS script, you can see it creates that preset. I can drag that into Decent Sampler and off we go. We've got a version here now working. One other variation in the Decent Sampler, whilst the contact one has actually got pre-wired two different reverbs, uh, there's only one type of reverb inside a Decent Sampler at the moment. So the FX1 knob will determine the amount of reverb and this second one determines the size of the whole of the reverb that you're actually putting yourself into. So one of the issues that we can find with these monolith samples is just the pure size of the instrument itself. So the, the samples themselves are going to load up pretty big. Uh, you can see here each of these are multiple hundreds of megabytes and so the overall instrument size can be quite large when you load it into contact. What we can do is we can split these monolith files up into individual files. So I'm going to do that now with the fam family piano. So we have this splitter script here and it uses the same configuration. So I'm going to configure back to using my family piano and I'm going to run the splitter script. So if we run Lua splitter and let's go into the instruments folder here, you'll see uh, what's happening in the samples directory as I run it. So you can see what it's done is it's found the WAV file and now it's actually splitting up using the same protocols as before to create all of these different files. So you can see it's creating the louder layers and you can see it's labeling them up with nice names um, as per the normal conventions that you might do for naming something. So let's let that run. 
So that took a few minutes and if you're going to use one of the larger monoliths then this will take a bit of time so one to go and make a cup of tea uh, and then come back to. But now what we can do is go back to our configuration file and use this parameter called using split and what this tells the automation is instead of using the whole monolith file is to go and look for those split files that were created by the splitter. So let's try that one again using the contact. So starting back again with a blank template, uh, we are going to run the automation this time, push it in, and you can see it's created the family piano. Now this time it's going to look very similar to what we saw first time around, but instead of those monolith files, you can see now we're actually referencing individual split files. This can help with the memory management of contact uh, because it can load those samples on demand as opposed to having to load the entire monolith, which can use a lot of memory. So the last thing that is inside of this uh, download package is some design templates to help you make those nice skins. So I'll show you the version for contact. The decent sampler one is very similar. So let's open up this in Photoshop and you'll see here that we have an entire template here uh, which is allows you to come and customize it as you would like. So what I would normally do is I would first off bring in a nice picture that's going to go on the background. Uh, this is a picture that Christian sent me and then we can just make that the right sort of size and then we can go ahead and change any of these other elements as we would like. So we can change the name here to be uh, my piano, whatever you would like it to be. So if you want different numbers of mics, there are different layers here that you can turn on and off. So I can turn off all the multiple mics if you don't have multiple mic signals. Um, I can also turn on the other one. So if you've got three mics or two mics, so you can come in here if you want to and even rename these to the um, particular microphone that you were using. You then just export that as a PNG and you're going to save that into the samples directory. Um, you can, if you want to, just call it the uh, template skin just overwrite what's there inside of the resources directory here. One thing to bear in mind is if you do create your own named template skin, as I mentioned earlier, you're going to need one of these text files which tells a contact about how to read that. You can just copy one of these ones from within the template and just make sure it's the same name as your PNG file. What's exciting about this technique is that even within just a few hours, Christian was able to sample an entire piano with multiple round robins, multiple layers, and then we simply just ran it through the tools and we had a full instrument in both contact and decent sampler. We would really like to make this monolith technique as accessible as possible. So if you've got any suggestions for improvements or want to get involved, then please leave something in the comments sections below. If you've enjoyed this video, then please do give it a thumbs up, share and subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one.